We love all the connections in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, seeing characters cross over. So let's look at eight different characters that we've already met in TV shows and films that could show up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, S.H.I.E.L.D. has carved out its nice little corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they've introduced the Inhumans while having guest appearances by the likes of Nick Fury, Maria Hill, President Ellis, Lady Sif, all characters introduced in the films. But there's plenty more they could use. So let's talk about them. I'm going to be realistic here, which is why I'm not going to say the Avengers Yes, that would be great, guys, but let's try to, you know, rein it in a little bit to who they could actually probably get on the show. Uh, let's start out with the Defenders. Yes, I'm just going to include them all as one listing because we kind of think of them all in the same breath. You know, all these characters being introduced on Netflix, it's really exciting. You've got Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, soon Iron Fist. They would be easy to fit in on a S.H.I.E.L.D. guest appearance, and you don't even have to see, see them in costume or in their superhero identity. I mean, one great thing in the Marvel comics is when someone needs a lawyer and they go to Matt Murdock. So what if Charlie Cox showed up as Matt Murdock on S.H.I.E.L.D.? Jessica Jones being a private eye, I think, is a pretty easy way to introduce her just for, you know, a single episode guest appearance on S.H.I.E.L.D. if they needed help. There's a lot of great ways you could integrate this that I think would really work naturally in the show. Uh, next one I want to talk about is Fandral, Fandral the Dashing from the Thor films. Uh, Zachary Levi took over playing this character in Thor the Dark World. And, you know, with Lady Sif probably off the table right now, she showed up a couple times on S.H.I.E.L.D., but now that uh, Jamie Alexander has a show on a different network, they probably can't get her back very easily. It would be cool to have Fandral come on. I mean, he didn't have a lot to do in Thor the Dark World, but Zachary Levi is such a charming, likable presence on TV, as he proved when he started in Chuck. Uh, it would be really cool to see him come on and to get to flesh out that character more. I mean, that's what TV can do that the movies can't. Take a peripheral character like that and maybe give him the focus and get to know him more than you don't when he's just sort of on the sidelines and helping out in a fight in a Thor movie. Uh, next one I want to talk about is Justin Hammer. Uh, very fun presence in a not so great movie, Iron Man 2, but Sam Rockwell brought such a great vibe to that character. They kind of reminded you he's out there in the Hail to the King short a couple years ago, saw him in prison. Why can't he get out of prison? Either he's freed or he breaks out and he's back to sort of selling arms, maybe uh, not doing it in uh, with a big company anymore. Uh, Rockwell is such a fun, you know, character actor and it would be really interesting to see him. I don't know if the movies are going to use him again anytime soon, especially since Iron Man 2 is not anyone's favorite. So I think S.H.I.E.L.D. would be a great way to bring this character back into play. Speaking of characters that probably aren't going to be touched by the movies anytime soon is Samuel Stearns. Uh, the Incredible Hulk is kind of the redheaded stepchild of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it still exists and it's still in canon, and they brought back Thunderbolt Ross very recently now in Civil War. So what about the leader? You know, the end of that movie, he was starting to become the leader. It didn't happen. They did a comic book that kind of told you that he was captured by Black Widow right after that. It'd be really cool to see him finally show up again, and why not just have him fully become the leader? The Hulk isn't getting his own solo movies right now, and so it would be almost a great way to build up more of the Hulk's backstory on S.H.I.E.L.D. I kind of feel like they're already doing that. Talbot is a major player in the Hulk comics, and they now made him a big part of S.H.I.E.L.D. So what about Samuel Stearns and kind of seeing the evolution into this villain, into becoming the leader? Another one I think that'd be really interesting would be Sharon Carter, AKA Agent 13. Uh, she's been, you know, in the last two Captain America movies, notable role, but not a ton of screen time. And I think that's just because there's so much going on in these Captain America movies. But Emily Van Camp, look, uh, she is a, uh, a friend to ABC. She started on Revenge for them for four years. And I think this would be, again, a way to show this character that I think people are intrigued by, but doesn't get a ton of screen time in these movies, and maybe get to show more of what she's like, and you know, just day to day. She's not S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore, she's CIA, but I think it's pretty easy to have the S.H.I.E.L.D. crew team up with her, and maybe get to see her in the field. We really haven't seen that, you know, uh, she's, she's more sort of in Winter Soldier, we saw her behind, behind control panels. It's time to kind of see Agent Carter, uh, sorry, Agent Carter, she has Agent Carter, Agent 13 out in the field and, you know, really maybe kick butt. And I think this would be a great way to do it. Going back to the Netflix side of things, I think a villain that might be great to use is uh, Will Simpson, who in the comics is Nuke. Well, they Frank Simpson in the comics, but he's still the character Nuke. Jessica Jones built this character up in a big way. He never fully became Nuke with the face paint, but he was getting there. And there's enough threads at the end of Jessica Jones, you feel like they'll probably deal with that in season two, but I feel like you could still bring Simpson into the mix on S.H.I.E.L.D. And again, this is a way to show the larger world that all of these shows and films exist in if the S.H.I.E.L.D. crew were to run into Simpson, 
and maybe even more people from this program he was a part of, but it could just be Simpson. Uh, and maybe you even give him the face paint or at least another step towards him fully kind of becoming the nuke persona. He was already getting there in Jessica Jones, but I think she could take him even further. All right, here is one of the, the big ones I'm gonna go with, and that is Scott Lang, Ant-Man himself. Uh, but being realistic, Paul Rudd, great guy, fun guy, very willing to do TV. You know, he did an arc on Parks and Rec and popped up again in the final season. He just starred in the Wet Hot American Summer TV show last year. He'll be back for the new season, most likely, we think. Uh, so I think that's, that's the one they could get. And, you know, Paul Rudd is so great, is so charismatic. And that character, uh, something that's so charming about him is that he's still very new to this whole world of superheroes, supervillains, and even something like S.H.I.E.L.D. with like the tech they bring. So it'd be really interesting to see him sort of discover more of the Marvel Universe and see it through his eyes as he encounters S.H.I.E.L.D. And you know, what does he know of Coulson? Does he know who Coulson was in the scheme of things back when the Avengers for movie first came out? That'd be interesting to see. And I think that uh, it would just, it would be great to see Ant-Man in the midst. It could be another heist type story, which is what of course Ant-Man is perfect for. They need a thief. They can go to Scott Lang, he can shrink, very helpful. Last but not least, okay, it's kind of a jokey one, but not, uh, is the, the Jotunheim Beast. I might be mispronouncing that name, but uh, this is the creature that the very end of Thor the Dark World, the end of the second post credit scene, showed running around London. He had come you know, through that, that portal, and it was kind of a one-off goof that he was still running around London, but actually it should kind of be addressed. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. in season one, when they were still finding themselves, had an episode that was touted as a Thor the Dark World tie-in and was pretty disappointing on that front. But what the hell happened to that creature? Uh, was it maybe eventually captured? What if it broke out? It was just, it was one of those things where it's a loose end from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, it was out there and why not deal with it on S.H.I.E.L.D. on a show that kind of is about these people having to deal with this bigger than life stuff coming into the real world onto Earth. So I think this would be a great way to, to tie that all up. So those are our thoughts on uh, eight different characters, you know, a little more than eight, but we'll say eight. Uh, heroes and villains from the greater cinematic, Marvel Cinematic Universe we'd like to see on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about these choices and are there others you'd like to see? Yeah, we know Iron Man would be awesome, but other ones that you think you could actually probably get on the show, let us know in the comments. And for plenty more on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, keep it here at IGN.